Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Dry Inside Group. We haven't started yet? Oh, we're still counting down. Yeah. Have you got wet feet this week? Or maybe muddy feet this week? I have. <laughs> it's all mud around where I am at the moment. And uh, yeah, you walk inside the caravan, because that's where I'm living in a caravan. And uh, there'll be you'll be walking around in thongs and you walk inside and there's mud up the back of your heel or something. Teresa says, uh, there's mud all up the back of your heel. Yeah, I know, cool. So you've got to attempt to get rid of all that and um, it's not much fun, but anyway. It's great to see some rain and uh, it's wonderful that the Lord blesses us that way. Other places are not so um, blessed with rain at the moment. They're blessed with high temperatures, aren't they? Yes, especially our friends from West Australia here. Yes, that's the way it is. But uh, it's great that you're able to come over here and share in um, our moisture content over here. And uh, there's plenty of it even further north where I'm supposed to be heading tomorrow, Queensland. Mm. So we will uh, endeavour to see what that's like tomorrow or Monday and see how we go with that. But welcome everyone, welcome, great to see uh, your smiling faces, more smiling faces than I've seen in a long time, because usually they're covered up, and uh, it's wonderful. That's one thing I've really missed, you know, you go to the supermarket or something, and like, I don't even look at people's faces anymore, because you're sort of like, is that so-and-so? Oh, I don't know if it is or it isn't. You know, you can't quite tell, because you don't see their smiling faces, but I'm going to like it now when I can see people's smiling faces once again. I think it's awesome to be able to have no masks. And uh, let's just continue to wash our hands and keep safe and uh, go from there, shall we? But let's um, stand and sing our first uh, hymn this morning. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
we're looking forward to the day when Jesus is going to make everything new, aren't we? And that's what this next song is all about. One day you'll bind every wound. The former things shall all pass away. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be.
church you certainly pack a punch with your singing thank you for singing so well and for all of our musicians and singers it's lovely to to hear you singing so well and for those of you that are worshiping um, online you're really missing out on a treat to be able to hear um, what's going on here in in person so if you're able to get to church I encourage you to come along and praise um, in person here um, because there's something to be said about being in the presence of others that that uh, also worship uh, as well. Uh, a big welcome to those that are online. Uh, many are away today ill. We, we, a big shout out to Larry and Jess and also to May and George, who's not well. Um, 
Just a, a reminder, um, those of you that are probably wondering how, how May is, um, she's still at home, still, still um, up for visitors on occasion. Um, just ring ahead if you can. Um, she does get a little tired from time to time and um, if, you, if you're interested in, in, in what, to, what to do, there's really nothing. Don't, don't bring food. We don't, don't need food, but they do need your prayers and they do love your company. And I know there's been a few people that have dropped around to say hello. Um, um, and Maisie does get tired, and George too. So um, keep them in your prayers. Keep Larry and Jess in your prayers as well. And we thank you for your support at this time. Um, big thank you also to Carlos. He's here taking our, our, um, our sermon today. Uh, thank you for all of our musicians coming down in the wet. Um, it's pretty pretty easy to when you've got online services to that, that, just to stay in bed that little bit longer isn't it and you just want to stay there maybe I'll watch church online but thank you for those that have come out um, it's it's nice to see you and it's nice to worship I think now that things are starting to sort of get back to can I say relative normality here uh, we might look into uh, whether we can start up our fellowship lunches again so I know we're missing that um, here and we haven't been able to do that uh, for, for a little while. So we'll look into that and, and uh, let you know what's happening there as well. Um, just a reminder as well, uh, Wednesday night meetings, 7.30, Friday night meetings, uh, 7.30 as well, going through the parables of Jesus. Uh, we've been through quite a few this, this year. Um, I've got quite a, quite a repertoire. It should keep us going for at least half the year. Um, I didn't realise, until you start going through them, how many parables Jesus actually had. There's similarities between the Gospels, but there's also differences. And some Gospels have uh, one parable, but the others don't, and, and vice versa. So come along and, and enjoy the, the opening Sabbath hours at 7.30 on Friday evening. Um, it's a blessing to me, um, and I know it's a blessing to those of you that come along as well. Um, just in a moment, we're going to get... Uh, our, our deacons and deaconesses to come up um, and take up our offering, but I'm just going to ask Kev to come up. And Teresa. And Teresa. There's been, um, apart from just mud in the caravan... Yeah, there's and, been a lot of things and, happening. And, um, and building, and I notice you've got uh, some frame that has arrived this yeah, week. Yeah, we've got timber frames sitting on the block. How's that? How exciting is that? So hopefully we'll see some walls go up, you know, the timber will go up and the trusses will go up and maybe that'll happen soon. So maybe you won't be in the caravan for too much longer. Well, that'll be nice. If you it, can eh? get some uh, building happening with yeah. all of this wet weather. So, so yeah. um, it's good. Yeah, then, and you then we're all lunch. invited up yep. for church lunch. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so exactly. So I've got Kevin and Teresa up here um, for, for a, a purpose in that um, Kev's got some news. No, Teresa has. Teresa has some news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teresa's, Teresa's get, taking get. on a new job this week, yeah? So she's all excited about that, aren't you, Teresa? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I thought I'd announce it to you that she's taking on a new job because she also rang up her mother and told her mother that she was taking on a new job as well. And what was your mother's reaction? She said, just as well I'm sitting down. What? Why would she have to sit down? Because she didn't believe what I was telling her. Ah, okay. So, Teresa's got a new job. That's pretty awesome. But you know what? So have I. I have been approached to go back into pastoral ministry. And I am taking on the role of uh, church pastor for C4 Church on, uh, at Wyong, basically. Uh, that's uh, Central Coast Community Church. Okay. So that's where I'm going to pastor. And uh, I saw people clapping. Don't get any <laughs> ideas. Your membership is here, uh, as is Kevin's membership, as mine, and yeah. we will make sure that it stays here. So, so the conference, North New South Wales Conference president approached me and said, well, um, would you consider this? And um, hmm, I considered it, and uh, they said, we feel you'd be a good fit for the church. And uh, it's an exciting time. I only have one church. I've never had one church in my whole entire ministry, which goes back many years. 
and uh, to have one church. I've always had one, two, three, or four churches and a school. One time I had four churches and a school is what I had. But every time I've always had a school as well. But this one, I've just got one church. How awesome is that? So, um, yeah, I'm following in the footsteps of Wayne's World and going from here to there. So we, we, um, we, we like to, to launch our missionaries from Mount Cola. <laughs> Uh, we've, we've done that quite, quite a bit, and um, Zoe and Ath will attest to that uh, with, with some uh, student pastors that came through this church, and they've gone off onto better and bigger things, and um, has been a training ground. But, but Kev has, uh, and, and Teresa have been an important part of our church. Kev was, was our minister um, a few ministers ago. Yeah, a couple of ministers ago, yes. Um, and there's been then. a lot of water under the bridge since then, but mm. if you notice that he still loves to come to Mount Cola because you are his family. Exactly. And we're going to miss you. Oh, hey, you guys. We're gonna I'm going to miss, gonna miss every one of you. I'm going to miss all these mus- musicians and singers. You know, I mean, we're awesome, okay? And hey? We- <laughs> we're, we're awesome. Together, we are awesome. The sound that comes out of us, you know, our voices, our musical instruments, uh, the fingers of this guy, everything just makes it beautiful, you know? Yeah, one day. You could visit occasionally, but don't do it too often because Colin will be upset. No. Okay. <laughs> we'll send Carlos around and then you're knocking on your doorstep. <laughs> but uh, we just wanted to, to acknowledge your, um, your ministry here to Mount Cola over the, the many years mm-hmm. that you've been, you've, been, you've been here, even through the ministers um, mm-hmm. that we've, we've had since you went into semi-retirement. Yeah, I've been um, into reti- retirement, semi-retirement for, what, eight years now? So... It's finally time to step back in. But I think it. you'll you'll agree that Kev's still got a lot to give, um, and we're glad that, that he's stepping back into ministry, even though it's a loss to us. So keep them in your prayers. I'd just like to have a quick word of prayer mm-hmm. um, over them, because today is their last Sabbath. It's happened very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so you start in two Sabbaths' time. Next week they'll be in Queensland to sort out a few things and up there. And then the following Monday on the 7th, I begin work. Um, so this is officially their last Sabbath here. Um, but uh, we'll not, try not and, forever. We'll try and sneak away occasionally. Not forever. Let's just um, bow our heads. Mm-hmm. Father God, uh, we thank you for the ministry that this church has had. Even though we are small in number, um, we know that you, you love us and there, there have been many great things and, and, and um, great people that have come out of this church, Lord, that, that have gone on to, to minister elsewhere. And, uh, Lord, we joke about it, but we are sending Kevin and Teresa out as missionaries into a foreign field. Um, and we thank you for calling him back into what was your original purpose for him. Uh, and that is to, to share your gospel and to um, bring people closer to you. This is an important part in the world. And we, when we look around us and what's happening in our world, um, we're a little bit isolated here in Australia, but we can see just the... The, the turmoil that is in our world and we know that your, your return is soon, even at the door. Um, Lord, Lord, we pray that um, you will bless us each one as we do ministry in our own ways and that we meet people that we only can come in contact with, that you will bless us each one. Be especially close to Teresa as a, as a pastor's wife. Um, it's an important role um, in a supporting role but also an active role. And we pray that you'll bless her too. Um, and, and Kev, as he, as he steps back in, that you'll be um, especially close to them, Lord, and guide them. So we send them forth, Lord, um, into uh, a, a, a new chapter of, of their lives, knowing that you are going before them and that you have put the pieces of the puzzle in place. Um, you've been working behind the scenes for this very event. And we thank you for your guidance and we can all take that on board to know that you guide us in everything that we do. Thank you, Lord. Bless us and bless them especially. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask the the singers to come back up. So, Teresa, you can sit down for a minute. Kev, you can come back. The kids, you got the offering bags today or who we got? Excellent. Come up. We're going to have prayer over our offering just a reminder that today's offering, I think it's for local church. If not, we'll make it for local church. Um, if you've got a physical offering, the kids will come around to take up your offering. Otherwise, it is um, online giving through e-giving. Uh, don't forget your tithes and offerings and thank you for your 
um, your support of our church. Let's just bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for your, your bountiful blessings toward us. Our cups overflow with everything that you give to us. And today we return a, a little bit of, of what you've given to us in our tithes and our offerings. Bless this church, bless the givers, and, um, and most importantly, bless the people that, that are going to benefit from our giving today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next song is How Marvellous, How Wonderful. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. How marvellous, how wonderful is my Saviour's love for me.
how wonderful is our Saviour. You know, before we come to this decision that we've just made to go back into ministry again, just this week I finalised a sale on a property in Queensland which is one block back from the beach and I was ready to go there and sit back and relax and retire and go for beach walks. But we've always said, Lord, if you want us to do something, make it happen. So I had to quickly get in touch with the conveyancer and say, listen, the stamp duty on this, we need to pay the dear of stamp duty because I'm not going to be living in it now. Oh, not in the next 12 months? I said, nope, not in the next 12 months. So we had to pay extra and, you know, God has it all worked out. It's all fine. Meanwhile, we've got a new place being built just up the road here. So it's fine. It's all happening. And uh, we're not that far away from you. But God leads. We don't know what he's up to. But as Colin said to me this morning, he says... We can see it all happening in the, in, the pre, in the last couple of years. Everything he's made happen. And it's, we've wondered why. And we can start to see how it's all fallen in place, exactly how he wanted it to fall into place. And has brought us to this place now where we've accepted a call back into ministry again. And that's just our Lord leading. How wonderful, how marvellous is our Lord. And uh, we can't praise him enough. All of us can't praise him enough. True? Okay. I'm going to leave, but it's still okay. Yeah. Let us sing our next one. Beautiful Saviour, God of all majesty, risen King, Lamb of God, holy and righteous, blessed Redeemer, bright morning star. How many more names do we have for our Saviour? Let us stand and praise Him with this song, shall we?
matter what we're going through. Sometimes do you feel like your world's just falling to pieces and you can't see how it's all going to come together again? Well, this song, the next one we're going to sing, is all about that. He will hold me fast. When I fear that my faith will fall, don't give up. Grasp hold of Jesus. He's there. He's there for you. He's there to lift you up. He's there to take you through. Take each one of us through. He's taken me through places where I thought it was the bottom. And he's brought me up and lifted me up again. And he can do that for each and every one of us. Let us sing about it with our next one. When I fear my faith will fall, Christ will hold me fast.
Let's just bow our heads. Our Father God, into your presence we come today seeking a blessing. We have blessed your name in song. And Lord, we, we mean these words that we sing. We mean our praises to you because of who you are, being our God and our creator, our redeemer. Lord, we also know that you are the God who cares for us. You see the sparrow fall. You can number every hair on our heads. You can plot out our lives and direct it if only we allow you to. And Lord, through this life's journey, it can be hard, it can be difficult. It can be a difficult road. We're told that narrow is the gate and narrow is the path that leads to life. And few there be that find it. Lord, we thank you that we've found it. And we've found it here in this church. And we want to follow you. We thank you, Lord, for your guidance and your leading for every one of us, Lord. And we pray in the words of this song that you will hold us fast. That you will never let us go. That you will hold us fast until the end. That we will make our calling and our election sure and that we will never lose our trust and our faith in you because we know on whom we have believed and you will see us through till the end. We thank you for that promise. We thank you, Lord, for our ministry here. We pray that you bless Pastor Carlos as he opens the word to us today. Um, we pray that the words that he gives us, we'll be able to hear them and interpret them and understand your spirit speaking to us. For those online, Lord, we pray that you'll bless them and uh, give them peace and assurance. Give them understanding and may they be able to hear clearly too, Lord. Bless us now as we, in this place of worship, wrap your arms of love around about us. May your spirit fall upon each of us. May your spirit fall upon the preacher and upon the listener. And may we be different when we walk out of here to the way we entered. In Jesus' name, amen. Two, testing one, two. See, what's the man at the back? I've already had it done. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Good to uh, be with you today. Again, and uh, I don't know about you, but I like the rain. I can't stand driving in the rain, though, because the other night I was driving back from Sydney to, Sydney to my place, and it was like shock horror almost, you know. I, I never slowed down to uh, 100 on the freeway. <laughs> that was bad. Anyway, doesn't matter. I really wanted to, um, I really wanted to acknowledge Kev and Teresa and, um, you know, we're going to miss the, the big, big low voice that he has here. And, uh, and I'm sure so he's smiling face and some of the jokes he throws around sometimes too. And uh, so I just want to say a special prayer as a church your home church, since your membership is here, maybe I might have to move my membership here, I don't know. But then I want to uh, have a prayer for you both. So if you both come up and, and I ask the elders to come up here too. Elders as well. I know they'll probably pray for him as well, elders. I know they'll probably pray for him at the other church when he gets there as well, because they'll probably be scared to know, not knowing who he is yet. But we're praying because we know who he is, and uh, and uh, we want to we want to um, acknowledge him, and we're grateful to God as well, uh, as, as much as I'm sure he is as well, that um, he's going back into ministry. 
a calling is something very special. And, um, and when you step out, I have not been there, but when you step out, I can imagine it's a, even more special when you feel the calling to come again. So we just place our hands over the family. Yeah? And we're just going to say a prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you once again for your marvelous uh, ways of blessing us in different ways. And uh, I acknowledge that this church has been blessed by Kevin and, and also by Teresa. And Lord, uh, we know now that as I leave, we will, we will sense the, a loss, but we also understand your calling him to work for you and that he's been called to uh, spread and to help others to come to know about your word and your gospel. So I pray, Lord, that you be with him and with Teresa as well, and that you bless them in a way that um, this would be like a, a new thing all over again, Lord, and it would be inspiring, it would be uplifting, it would be joyous to be in your service, Lord, and, and working together, Lord, in your church. So, Lord, thank you so much. Let your Holy Spirit continue to work within their lives and to now more so uh, strengthen them again as they move forward in this new venture in the new church, Lord. Thank you so much for their presence here, for the music, for their help, for everything else that they've done in this church, Lord. And uh, we acknowledge now our loss, but someone else's gain. But we'll always uh, maintain contact, Lord. And thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless this. We'll get your membership done. Hmm. Well, it's got to be good to be sensing the idea of being of one minded or like minded. Yeah? What do you reckon? Are you like minded with your wife? Don't answer that just in case we get in trouble. Whoever's up front always gets it, so. <laughs> and this guy's not married yet, so we'll talk about that later on. <laughs> but you see, the whole idea of being, you know, I've come across people who says, I've got to find people who are like-minded. And I'm thinking, you know, where, where, does, where does that really take you? Where does that take you? I've got to find people like, they're one, like-minded, minded, like, you know, thinking like I do. And I often think, I come into a church and I see, I see this type of people and that type of people. I see this type of culture and that type of culture, uh, young and old and all sorts of things. And, 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 I, and I think, are we like-minded? Not really. Let me just bring one text to you. And it's found in, are you ready for this, Chris? <laughs> just going to put pressure on him today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. <gasps> 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Thank you, Chris. He's fast. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? <laughs> instruct Jesus. You know, who knows what he's thinking about? Who knows what, in order to tell him what to do? I mean, how many times have we wanted to tell God what to do? Come on. No, God, that was not the person I wanted to marry. I wanted to marry this one over here. Oh, no, God, I wanted the other card. I'm <laughs> still after my Ferrari. You know, no, God, that was not what you need to do. We need to change that person's life now. Uh, you know, we're no one to really be telling God what to do. But here he says this, but we have the mind of Christ. And so my thought was, where do we go with that one? Where do you want to go with that? We have the mind of Christ. It seems so deep and so, so much depth to it. You know, I already said that in two words. And I kept on thinking about it. I said, you know, well, hold on a second, I'm like-minded. Um, so I looked up like-minded, and I got a definition on, on the Google, of course. You know, where else would you go? People who are described as like-minded share the same opinions, ideas, and interests. Well, I don't think so. You see, I don't like kimchi very much. You're not smiling on that one, are you? 
But you love kimchi, yes? yes? Of course, yeah. And the hotter the better? No? So there's a difference in my, even amongst yourselves about kimchi. How about that? But you would all eat kimchi whichever way. What do you reckon down the back, young girl? Yeah, I know. I know who you are behind the mask. Don't worry. You can't hide from me. <laughs> you see, I keep on looking at this and I, and I thought, okay, well, what, else, uh, what are some uh, phrases or vocabulary words that relate to this? Describing people with the same qualities, I'd say, would maybe move in the right direction. So, but there are some phrases which I came across, I thought this is interesting, is a chip of the old block, idioms, right? A tough, tricky, etc. customer, uh, be of like mind, birds of a feather. Are we birds of a feather? No? Yes? You reckon? Well, I can't fly. All right, so, birds of a feather. What else did I come across um, uh, that I like? The other ones don't seem to be very good. A meeting of minds. A cast in the same mold. Are we being molded together here? Do you think so? Maybe not. And, and so, and it goes on with a few others as well, but the basic idea was just down that track with, you know, of being like-minded, you know, um, of one mind, of long, uh, same objective. And, and I want to work on that a little bit because I, uh, I don't know, because I thought it was important because I have a person that, that doesn't go to church, doesn't want to go to church, because they say that they don't find people like-minded. And I'm struggling with that. Because they believe in Christ. But they don't believe in the church because they don't find people like-minded. And I don't know if you ever go down that track to try and understand and grapple with it. I, I, I try to because I want to see how I can get into it. You know? And Paul actually is taking a text from uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 13, if you want to see the similarity here, he takes a text from there, actually, um, and puts it in the context of Jesus. Chris? He says, uh, Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or, has his counselor has taught, uh, or as his counselor has taught him? And, and he brings it in there, but he, he now has the idea, we'll, we'll have the mind. We all have the mind of Him. We all have the mind of Him. So, I want to go down that track. And then, uh, with these things, you know, the, as Paul tries to make these statements and, and concerning all believers, we have the mind of Christ. Uh, the mind of Christ means that we share the same plan. This is to put in a very simple context. Uh, the same plan, purpose, and perspective of Christ. And it's something that all believers possess. Do we really have the same plans, purpose, and perspective of Christ? I don't think so. In the Sabbath school lesson, we actually learned some of that. <laughs> we have different perspectives. But I think we need to differentiate the little things at times, you know. Uh, I know we always say that, uh, what, how does the expression go? It's in the detail. I do want to say the devil, but anyway, it's in the detail, yeah? Uh, but overall, we look at this whole, it's a, the whole concept of being one body. We've, we've talked about being the one body. We've talked about being a one in Christ. And, uh, and this always comes up with this whole idea of being like-minded, being one mind, as it says here in this, in this context. And uh, I thought, okay, well, let's work with that idea. Let's work with that. How can we, we can still be of one mind or like-minded, but we're still different. We're still different. Now, this young couple at the back over there, what are your names again? <laughs> no, it's you two. <laughs> oh, so people, look, Janet and Richard, have a look at them. That's Janet and Richard there. This young couple <laughs> couldn't separate while you were singing the hymns. 
How would you like that? Hey, you're singing and they're just hugging away like anything. What's going on there? Are you like-minded? Oh, is it young love? Are you like-minded or, or as one mind? So having the mind of Christ means we understand God's plan in the world. Which anybody can understand the plan. You know, they give you a plan, say, okay, I understand what this plan. Whether we acknowledge and maybe we don't understand why you have that plan might be a different story. And to bring God glory to to bring God glory is another idea which comes in with this this whole concept of being like minded. We come to sing, we'll sing, everybody gets involved, and today and every other day, you know, I, I always enjoy coming here because there's always music and I love the music from you guys as well. And the singing, I'm sorry, Kev's gonna go, and no, I'm not gonna take over your spot over here. You know, the whole idea is that that it's, you know, it comes through and you can hear it. And now without the muffling of the, noise, of the, of the mask, it actually comes through a little bit better. And, and that was the first things I enjoyed when I first came here. I always enjoyed, I was uplifted. I felt like we were at one. Restoring creation to its original splendor is something that also comes up in this whole idea of being like-minded. We all want to be the best we all want to be the best. God wants us to be the best. He, he wants to restore our minds. He wants to restore our conscience and bring us to what it was originally meant to be, originally was. And He wants to restore that same thing. So, you know, we're like-minded. We want to be better than what we are. We want to be in a different frame of thinking, a higher level of thinking. So yes, we want to be restored. We want to understand more God's Word. We want to understand more His plan. We want to understand, well, we want to be able to be able to talk to Him and hear directly from Him. What does He want? How does He want it done? Why this or why that? And so with that comes also this whole idea of salvation that we talk about in Sabbath school lesson. Salvation of all the sinners. You know, how can we all be of one mind if we're selfish? How can we all be of one mind if we're selfish? And that is the one thing that always keeps on coming in between us and them and other people. The idea of sometimes, you know, we, are, we tend to always want things our way. We tend to want to do things, you know, my way or the highway. Uh, We want to do things in a certain way that always interferes with the bigger picture that we always try to plan as God's people here on church, in church. And we, we see this whole idea, and we need to understand that God's mind is to save every one of us, every last person, every person that's ever existed on this earth. He's always wanted to save us, and we talk about that. We talk about this whole idea of God dying on the cross for each and every one of us. Why? Well, because we're just a bit too loopy in our lives to understand the whole concept of sin, the whole concept of, of sin and death and salvation. We grasp at the Bible text to try and understand this whole idea. And through that, we take it on board and we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, our Deliverer. We want to also grow with Him and understand more things. But you know, as time goes by, we tend to waver a little bit here and there and we sit comfortably in our churches. And yes, I have to mention it. I keep on thinking. It was in my little piece of paper. There are 480 churches in Ukraine at the moment. 34 or 43,000 members. And I'm thinking, you know, how are they thinking at this stage? Are they like-minded? Some have gone out quickly, some have stayed to fight, I don't know. But that's how it is in Ukraine at the moment, the situation. So where do we start to, to find the foundation? Where do we find the base from which we can start to develop and to, um, 
to build upon this whole idea of being like-minded or, or of one mind, you know? How do we build upon that? How can we move in and, and build upon that? How do you build upon the marriage? You know? How do you build upon that marriage? You know, when it says that two people come together, become one. And so the idea of one-minded, is it really one-minded? I'm sure that most of you who have been married know very well that it's never always the case. <laughs> it's never always the case. He wants it this way, she wants it that way. <laughs> I think it's better this way. No, I think it's better that way. But maybe we need to look further than the initial, than the areas of what needs to be done, but the purpose behind it all. The reason behind it all. And here we have the, you know, the, the idea. It, mean, it means that we identify with, God, with Christ's purpose to seek and to save what was lost. That comes from Luke 19.10. Don't worry about it. That comes from Luke like, you know, that Jesus' purpose was to seek and to save the lost. And so are we like-minded with Jesus on that perspective? Where do we go with that? I often wonder, how often do I go into the streets seeking, seeking to find someone for salvation? I don't know. I remember many times when I first came in the, in the, to the church, whenever I was in the bus or train or anything, I had someone next to me, I was always constantly thinking, how can I start up a conversation? These days, I don't think of it that much anymore. And when I don't, and I try to avoid it, the next person starts up a conversation anyway. So we need to understand, you know, what is the main purpose in our lives? I mean, we can be different. We have different churches. We have different churches in terms of what? One's more this way inclined, the music's different, it's different people, the younger people, the different uh, way of doing things. Then you have the full Korean church, the full Spanish church, you have Polish church, you have the, and you have different churches. So they're all like-minded. What brought them together? The language. Not that was it, or it wasn't. But the language is what brings them together there. So how do we look at that? Where do we go with all that? We all have differences. And we get together with like-minded people in most cases. I want to go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So, are we one-minded with Jesus? After all that we've been written here. And it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So you need to read the rest, all those verses and see how that all fits into our lives as well. How does that really correspond? How do we live out our lives being mind, having our minds as one with Jesus as well? And Jesus' perspective of humility and obedience is something that we, we have a hard time dealing with many times in many ways. Within that, you find other things such as compassion, uh, and, and, and a prayerful dependence upon God for everything. And you know, uh, people, Christians, still have an issues with God or of depending totally upon God. I want to come now to this part, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. And I'm going to finish early today, because some people said a few words about me carrying on. 1 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 2. 
Actually, we're going to really take it from uh, verse 5 to, 5 to 16. We're going to do, break it down in a few verses, yeah? So we do the first verse, which is uh, 5 and 6. And it says, That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. And the whole idea is that the mind of Christ stands in a sharp contrast to the wisdom of man. You know, the wisdom of God is so much higher and superior because he knows he is omniscient. And that wisdom is something that has been given to us through the Bible. It's been given to us and shared to us. And the idea is to keep on coming back until we see that wisdom working its way into our thinking patterns. So we can be of like-mindedness. In verse 7, it says, the mind, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery... We speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. And again, this whole involves the wisdom from God, um, uh, once hidden, but now it's revealed. It's been revealed. It's a, it's, a, it's a mystery. And a lot of people don't understand the mystery. Last time I preached, I preached about, I normally ask you, but I, I realized many times you forget what I'm talking about or didn't understand what I was saying. But the idea is this, that, you know, God has opened up our, th our thinking. He opens up our thinking and our minds to, to investigate, to, to try to understand the depth of this whole situation that we find ourselves into. What is God trying to say? What is God trying to do? How is He doing it? And eventually it leads us back to another thing. Who is God? Which I'm sure we'll find out when the time comes. But it is, it, it is within that that we start to be able to portray and present to other people who don't know anything. When you look at other religions, there's nothing that really compares to Christianity. Nothing at all. Not one of those gods that ever existed has offered himself as a sacrifice for his creation. Have you ever done a, a clay pot? You ever done a clay pot, try to do, you know, nothing comes out? It's all pretty messy at the end of the day. Yeah? I mean, I've still got something my son did when he was, I don't know what age it was, but he did something which was, I don't know what it was, but it looked like a pot of some sort. It was messy, but, you know, at the end of the day, he gave it to me as a, as a thing. And I think, I, and I still have it. I have a little box, you know, uh, this is... My kids, uh, my, one of my kids' boxes for remembrance and things, and each kid, I've got something there. It's still there, and I, and I, and I, and it's still in my mind, still stays there. Nothing special. But you know, as he goes along and he gets older, he learns and he understands the mechanisms, he understands the methods and the whys, and he can make something a little bit better than what he did before. And that's why I'm saying, you know, we look at a lot of people who do not know. Other churches do not know how God, uh, a, a, a God. You don't hear any other churches saying, sorry, any other religions saying, if God was love, why is he letting all this happen? Only in Christianity do we have that. Only in Christianity. In the other places, they're all there saying, okay, well, this is part of the process. We come back, you know. Next time you come back, because you've been a bad boy, you're going to come back as a, a lizard. You like that one? Huh? The one I hate the most, if you come back as a rock, you'll be there for ages before anybody smashes you. At least a lizard, you can run around a bit and play around. Anyway, it is within this, you know, one-mindedness leads us to try to comprehend a higher purpose, for us, uh, to comprehend a direction, and other religions just don't have that, really, you know, it's all about me being better or, or worse, and moving forward one way or another, whereas when Christianity, Jesus Christ just came and says, hey, I love you so much, 
you've stuffed it up, if I can say it like that, sorry. But I'm here to help you out. It's the most simplest way I can tell you about it. I love you so much, I'm going to help you out of this situation that you're in. And many times we don't realize that. And other people don't realize that. You know? Because the ego, selfish part of us, this part that says, I'm okay, you're not okay, you know, I'm all right, leave me alone. And sometimes we need the finger of God touching our heads that we may be able to comprehend how that works. The wisdom from God, once hidden, is being revealed to us as we go, as we come together. So we might not be like-minded in a certain way. We're not be, you know, we're different. Someone likes chocolate, dark chocolate, others white chocolate. Yeah? Some people like Pop Asia. Oh, did you know that uh, there's this particular group going to be doing a concert through um, event cinemas? Let me just say to the Koreans. Did you know that? It's going to be a live concert on screen, of course, <laughs> at uh, event cinemas. And my daughter loves the, this group, B, whatever. Oh, what was that? Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't forget that. Doesn't matter. I don't know. I'm here. But yet, yeah, you know, where people like some things, the, you know, the old classical movie, others like the hip hop, others like this, others like, you know, everybody has different likes. And uh, we need to move on, of course, sorry. <laughs> Verses 10 to 12. It says, But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of man which is in him? Question mark. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. And now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Well, there's a lot to unpack on that one. But simply it just means the spirit of God has been given to us to try and understand this type of wisdom, this type of understand and the things that God reveals to us, you know, uh, to believers and the Holy Spirit is one of the main people in our lives that has us been drawn to Him to be like-minded. He tries to draw us to Him to be like-minded to the Holy Spirit. And as we read through this, you know, it's not the spirit of the world, it's not the world's way of thinking, but it's the spiritual way of thinking. And God wants to restore our spiritual nature. You know, the spiritual nature has been affected from the very beginning, and God wants to restore that, and He works for it, and He gives us the Holy Spirit. He says, I want you to be like-minded, because I want you to be perfect from the very beginning. And then we go to verse 14, which also goes and says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And how many times have you come across people who just don't comprehend this whole idea of God from the biblical perspective? They just don't want to comprehend it or they can't comprehend it. They don't want to comprehend it. And we know that sometimes God or the Holy Spirit has touched us in such a way, it's touched some of us in such ways that we, we've opened up We've opened up. We maybe at first we were not too sure, we're not too clear. Maybe we didn't want much of a God or religion or church or anything like that. But then the Holy Spirit just touches us in such a way and all of a sudden our mind starts to explore, wants to know more. And therefore we start to investigate and the Holy Spirit starts to guide us and give us understanding. And we start to discern things. It is, as we can see, that Christ cannot be understood by those who do not have the Holy Spirit or those who do not wish to have the Holy Spirit, better said. And the next one, verse 15, is what we started with in the beginning. The mind of Christ gives believers discernment in spiritual matters. He says, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. 
spiritual discernment given to believers in spiritual matters. In order to have the mind of Christ, one must first have a saving faith in Christ. We need to start from some place. You know, we need to find, a, like I said, we need to find, a, we need to start a place. And, and the whole idea is accepting and acknowledging Jesus Christ as our Savior. It's not a matter that you need to be saved because you're a big sinner. Because you can be a little sinner and you still need to be saved. You see what I mean? It's more a matter of this faith, or better said, this saving faith in Jesus Christ. It's this thing that we come back to Jesus and we accept Jesus for what he is. We acknowledge Jesus for what he is. And therefore, within this context, within this context, the Holy Spirit works in our lives and starts to, to open up our minds and our thinking and our direction. And everything we do now, our decisions should be in the right direction all the time. And it's here, you know, that we start to become like-mindedness with God. And as we become like-mindedness with God, then we start becoming like-mindedness with each other. We'll still have our differences, yeah? You like your kimchi very hot, I like it very, 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 very not hot, <laughs> you know? And, and the whole idea is that, you know, there will be differences, and that's, and that's fine. I mean, there's differences in the way we appear, the way we look. What else do you want? But still, in purpose, it is important that as believers in Jesus Christ, we be like-minded together as well in the whole idea of what we are here for and what are we doing about it. As a church, what are you here for? I'm not going to answer that for you. As a church, what are you here for? And what are you going to do about it? And that's so important, so important that you clarify that, you know, because once you start to clarify that, we'll understand better, we'll understand ourselves better in many ways, and also where God is leading us, as we are like-mindedness. And God also works in different ways, you know. He'll send missionaries up, up to the northern coast, you know, or to the south coast, or to Africa, and others just stay in one place, in a college, in a theology, and they study the theology, and they work on the theology, and develop the theology, and you've got all these differences happening all the time. And that's what makes it so much more interesting to be part of God's people. To be like-minded and yet different. And we can live better that way at times. We actually can live better. I know that sometimes, you know, we come across people in church that they're not the same as us. And I'm not talking about culture, I'm talking about personalities. We don't get along. But we manage it. We manage it. And through the grace of God and the Holy Spirit, we manage that. And we deal with that. We understand our differences. We also should understand that everybody has their own little private sin or their own private problem in their lives, which we don't know about. And that is okay, because they're dealing with God. We don't have to deal with that. So where do we go with all these things? Well, like I said, we have to understand that God is forever working in our lives. And we need to also understand that He leads us in so many ways. You know, being like-minded, we can be like-minded in praise. I, I, we will not have to go to the text, but I'll just quickly touch on Romans 15. It talks about us, uh, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. In other parts, it says like-minded in standing and sharing the gospel, sharing the gospel together. How many of you have ever gone to street preaching? Okay. Not many. No one's ever done street preaching before? You ever gone to the streets and tried to, yeah? It's a bit scary at first, you know. I've done it a few times. And, it, you know, particularly in the manly corso. Have you seen anybody? No? No, I don't see it very often these days anyway. But I had the small Spanish church out there. We were a bunch of people out there trying to talk to people about Jesus. And, you know, and I remember before I was in the church, always making fun of those type of people. And now as I'm talking, I'm thinking, oh, they're making fun of me. Oh, it doesn't matter. Let's go along. 
But yeah, you know, sharing the gospel is the one thing that you also need to understand as to where we go, uh, where we need to go. The one mind, in inverted commas, used to preach the gospel refers to the spirit and not the method, which is very important. The other part, I'm now skipping a few things. Like minded also means that we all have the one hope. And here we're in Philippians chapter 2, verse uh, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, if there, there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, of all the things we've been talking about, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like minded or one minded or in one mind, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind, as I said. So, you know, we can see these things, you know, it's. It's the hope that's within us, the hope that things will be better, the hope that, that all things will change, the hope that we're going to make it to heaven and we're going to see our families and friends there as well, the hope that all these problems that happen around the world will be gone, no more pain. Like mine that also talks to us, we're very humble. And I mentioned that earlier too, humble, in Philippians 2, uh, verses 3 to 11, but I'm just going to say one part, it says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. The idea of being humble. The idea of being humble. And when we are all humble, we recognize the Savior's need and understanding His word and following Him in no, is not difficult for us. And therefore, we must have the same mind in humility as well. And the idea of being like-minded is that we're going to continue the same path. We're going to go down the same direction. You know, um, I'll read back in Philippians chapter 3, verse, um, I'll read it from verse 14. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God would reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same spirit, by the same rule, and let us be of the same mind. This points out that we must not pretend to have achieved everything, but that we must continue forward, having all of the same mind, and continue to the same goal. It is very clear that when we look at this whole idea, you know, what church would you like to find that is like-minded? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? So if your wife or your husband is not like-minded, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? The kids are changing. The kids are, oh yes, they're changing. And you can see that already. The kids have got different thoughts already. Different, we're talking now to... What generation? You're generation? No, you're not generation X anymore, are you? Generation Y? Oh, no, no, I can't remember now. I mean, the next, the next baby ones are the uh, generation alphas. They're coming up. But you're not there. You're generation Y, I think. Or just... Z, Z sorry. Uh, Z. <laughs> generation Z. Oh, my goodness, you know. You throw it to them an old telephone, they wouldn't know what to do with it. And that's what's happened. They come in with a whole different perspective of life, of meaning and sense, of everything that's around them, what's happening. And if you think about it, look where we're in this, you know. And I was just thinking about it on the way over here. I think, where are we? Who was here in the previous war? Arthur, should I look at your direction? No? Was anybody in World War II? Okay, so we've been in a situation where we've seen quite a number of small wars. We've seen difficult wars. We've had pandemics. We've had an increase in all sorts of things happening around us in, in, in tidal waves and or tsunamis and stuff like that. All these things are happening, you know, and I keep on thinking, okay, so we where do we go with all this? Where do we go? Are we like-minded in that Jesus Christ is coming soon? Are we like-minded in that there's only one way to, to be saved? 
Are we like-minded? That God loves us so much that he died on the cross for us. Are we like-minded? That God loves even my enemy. So where do we go? What do you want to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Things are changing for us back to normal in some ways. We now don't have to have the mask. We can wear it if we want to. Eventually we're going to have lunch again. Oh, good. I heard a hoot. Mm. And uh, yeah, ups from Chris. He's happy about that too. So we have lunch. We can spend some time together. You know, all these things are going to happen. And I'm thinking, okay, so where do we as a church go to now? What is our next stage now that things are changing? And now, are we going to be like-minded with the same objective, the same purpose as we're driven? So, you know, today, as we look at this whole idea, I just want you to think in your lives, you know, what has Jesus Christ meant in your lives these two past years, past years that we've been, you know, working through a pandemic, the change is coming back again. For some people, two years is like they've lost two years in their lives. Other people, they've gained things. Where do we go as a church now? What do we look at? What do we look forward to? Where are we going to head to? But most of all, you can't think of it unless you have the same mind and that is only brought to you through Jesus Christ. So open up your hearts again. Renew your lives with Jesus Christ. Let us be one-minded and, and, and purposeful in what we do as an individual, as an individual Christian, better said, and also as a group, as a church. And I'm hoping that this year things will start turning in different ways as well. May God bless you all and strengthen us to be able to extend our minds and to be one-minded and like-minded. Amen. Let's stand and sing our final song today. Beginning to end, my life is in your hands. Great, great is your faithfulness.
thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this uh, song that acknowledges how faithful you are to us. And we are humbled before you today as we acknowledge how you've been with us, how you worked within us, and how you want us to be like-minded with you. We thank you for the opportunities in our lives, for the difficult times that we've reached, that has caused us to reach out to you. And we pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to continue to work deep inside our lives and our hearts, that we may be able to continually see your light. Bless us, Lord, as we continue throughout this week. Help us to see things from your point of view always, to be like-minded. In Jesus' name, amen.